I'm gonna have to switch my camera each time, I think. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Don't Unfriend Me show. Make sure to like it if you haven't liked it. Make sure to love it if you haven't loved it. Oh, boy, do we have a busy night. Let me gather my windows. Arrange all windows. You know how long it's been since I've been on on a Tuesday? I like this. I, I like, like this. It when you're on. I like it when you're on. I like and, it when uh, you're on. Ooh, easy. <laughs> Don't tease me with a good time. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Don't Unfriend Me show. We are a uh, pre-show right now. And uh, here, I'll put this little clock up in the corner here. Uh, we don't have a guest tonight. We were going to have Izzo on, but Izzo uh, is not able to, to make it. Olivia sent him a message, which I'll play for you. Uh, Liv, what's our T minus? Uh, six minutes. Six minutes. Roger. Roger, six. We're green to go. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. What's don't your, call me Shirley. What's your Victor Vector? What's your clearance? Clarence? Uh, Jimmy, do you like movies about gladiators? You ever seen a grown man naked? You ever had a dog rub up and down on your leg, Jimmy? Jimmy, have you ever, you ever seen, seen the ins- Turkish prison? <laughs> have you ever seen the inside of a Turkish prison? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. is the proper is the proper. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, you have your dad go ahead and fucking you're cream Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> um, <old>. pre-show. <laughs> <clears throat> Spreely will be on at 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Holy crap. Uh, pre-show video. We got, got a little fun for you here. Um, just a little conversation. Just a little rootin' tootin'. Um, let's see if I can get this thing on here. Um, here we go. We're going to go to the old secondary I like that shirt, Matt. Yeah, I know. I, it's too, cool. identify as a patriot. Yeah. I like the stand-up, dude. I, I enjoy it. I've been doing the recorded shows and morning shows on, with standing. And I, uh, I like, it, I like it much better. Is Louis that on Gino. a Vera desk? I, I got to ask. Is that yeah, what that is? is? Yeah, yeah. The desk moves up now and down. Then I've got a monitor over here and here down below. So if I want to sit down, I can do it. If I want to stand up. So I've, I've, I just invested a little bit in my station and it's so much better. And, uh, it just allows me to, it allows me some freedom to do the things that I want to do. Um, pre-show video just for some fun. Um, because we're not going to have time in the real, real world uh, of the show. So uh, with this, we're going to make a part of the show because it's so good. Um, that isn't it. Um, that isn't it. That isn't it. That isn't it. Oh, we got a good show tonight. It's going to be, we're going to be packed. I mean, we got a lot to do. This is going to be crazy. This is going to be a good show, though. Um, okay, here is the uh, the pre-show show. Unable to connect to my camera. Fine, we don't care. All right, here it is. So we just put this up. Watch this. Watch this crap. This is insane. Um, Olivia had a chance to see this, and uh, uh, this is insane. To oh, me. Watch it. I posted that. Yeah, watch it. No, you didn't. It was awesome. Watch this. I got it on Twitter. Here you go. Watch this. modern technology to make this a little bit easier for y'all to see. See, this is why Ecamm is the greatest thing in the world. I mean, it's just there is no better streaming software. You pay for it, uh, but it's uh, it's pretty miraculous. Watch this. Ooh, reshape the window so we can get maximum penetration. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? For her. I love this software. Yeah. All right, here's the, for her pleasure. Yeah. Oh, dude, this is when you know you fucked up. <laughs> this is when you know. This is like, what, what, what's the Hayden? Or what's the Hayden thing? She says the video. Uh, f- Dumb that, ways to die. Well, you got to sing it. Sing it the right way. Dumb ways to die. That's it. So Hayden does that. She always does that. Whoa! Whoa. That's gonna leave a mark. Well, watch at the end here. You know it sucks. That's an FJ Cruise. Those are actually really I nice. Know. Oh, they're expensive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would have given a ten, but the splash, the splash yeah. was a little. You didn't stick the landing. 
Yeah, no, I didn't stick to landing. But you know, I'm just you know, I, I'm just like, geez, Louis, how many how many virgins do you get if you if you roll an, an FJ cruiser on the beach? I mean, I think you're negative on that count now. I think you end up <laughs> sucking off guys in robes for the rest of your eternity. What do you think he said when he was out there? He's Allah Ali Akbar. There's supposed to be an explosion at the end. That's, That's what, what I was me saying. Anyway. I mean, what, 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 that was a, that was the worst suicide attempt I've ever seen. That wasn't a suicide <laughs> bombing. That was horrible. Jeez, dude, you didn't even hit the guy that was just standing there. You could have crept up on him or something. What a horrible terrorist. I'm the, I'm the Indian evil Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> He's Muslim, not Indian, just, you racist dick. Whatever. It should be, I go to hunt and kill infidel. Can you That's imagine? Sure. Wait, wait, could you imagine <laughs> if, can, like, if that dude was, like, being watched by a pred, right? <laughs> And right, the guy right, right. That, the FMV you guys are going to launch a hellfire. He's going, he's going, we have one single male uh, of of uh, military aged in all yes, Holy right. shit. That hellfire is 1.6 million. We just saved $940,000 by using the TJ. FJ. You know, the interesting thing is, is, is I don't understand how he could afford that on 7 Eleven salary. That's crazy. Oof, right. Now that's, that's racist. Now that, that's that, but Joe Biden said worse. I mean, yeah, come on. Did. Joe Biden said worse. Anyway, we're just having fun. Pre-show, folks, welcome. Uh, Spreely people are now in the house. Welcome, Spreely. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be moving to uh, a couple of uh, just intros and stuff. Welcome to the Don't Unfriend Me show. Uh, Izzo won't be here tonight. Uh, Olivia has a video that she's going to share uh, uh, with, with uh, she sent to Izzo in a uh, fiery flash. So we'll be back on the other side of about three minutes. And then we've got a packed show. I mean, this show, we don't even have any time to screw around. So so stick with us. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't liked it, do it right now. We only have 17 likes, and we've got 100 people on. Come on now. Five seconds, T minus three. We'll see you back in just a few. Thank you for the donation, Leo. Appreciate it. Bronze Club member. It's nice, man. We've got we've got quite a few people joining the uh, the Dumb Club. You'll see it here. Uh, for ease of access, you can just go to thedumbclub.com. You can also go to thedumbshow.com. You can go to the Dumb Club, and soon you're gonna be able to go to the Dumb Store. Getting pretty easy, folks. Not very right. difficult with those URLs. You can remember everywhere you need to go. Here's the rest. <laughs> Matt, congratulations on your success, brother. And uh, I really appreciate you giving, you know, both sides, you know, and just pe free speech, the opportunity to have a platform, dude. Got it. You got it. Thanks for everything you've done for this country, Eli. We'll talk next time. Tell Jen hello. And I'll have this ready in a couple of hours and you can uh, share it and take a look. I uh, thank you, man. Thanks, brother. All right. Bye bye. Adjusting transmitter output.
Yeah. This is the Don't Unfriendly Show with your hosts, Matt, Leroy, Amy, Olivia and Mike. Geopolitics, military analysis and election coverage. Coming to you live on the Spreely.tv network and all major social media channels at The Dumb Show. Honest, direct, unfiltered. We can agree, we can disagree, just don't unfriend me. Welcome to the Don't Unfriend Me show. We're going to have to get this camera syncing a little bit better. What happened was and is is that my other camera, I've got four cameras pumping into this thing, and the uh, computer's running a little hot. So we're going to have to <coughs> see if we can fix this or Make jump it off. Switch. I don't think so. It's it's starting to catch up. It just it needs to cool down. So uh, I mean, we're running. I mean, I'm looking at my CPU, pro, my my fan. I'm around 162, which is pretty warm for a Mac. So I may have to switch, and then we're gonna have to adjust the cam. No, there it's catching up. What the? Heck? Hold on, everybody. We're we're trying to get this thing uh, copacetic here. Hey, Liv, you're not cold, right? There's no way. Not right now, no. Yeah, it's it's way too hot in here. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna just kick this on and see if I can get this thing to uh, to slow a little bit. Let me go to a uh, different screen. I might need you to come over here, punk. Okay. We're gonna find out. Yeah, it's great for recording, but it's not good with this many people. All right, honey, I'm gonna need you to come over. All right, we're gonna go into. Uh, down can can you say can you can you say down periscope make it so number one go ahead Leroy down periscope make it so number one. Oh, you Son wanted that bitch. part of it oh I understand okay. you're, you're not my number one I'm your number make it, just say it make it so <laughs> number one number one God to for, for forever Have you ever seen Brent Spiner's impression? No, but but can you oh this desk? God. Just hold on. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Okay, Liv, go. What am I doing? You're just trying to get. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was trying to get this thing to work. Okay. Hey, this would be good. Run. Go. Go. Go, 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 go. Thank you, baby. While right. we're enjoying the chaos that is the Spear household, um, I'd like to thank Spreely TV for... Uh, for hosting us and uh by the way folks you can pick these documents of freedom up at matt's store you guys know where to find that you don't need my help maybe you do i don't know i was really looking forward to meeting uh dominic izzo tonight but eh, he's coming happen, he's gonna right? be here he's gonna be here this week sometime uh and okay. we'll make sure that you're here because that's that's important he's yeah coming. Yeah, just turn the camera on, and then we're going to have to focus here. Let me uh, just get Bammo. Yeah, big focus, please. All right, put your hands up. It's here. Oh, yeah. Hand Bug on. There you go. That looks pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Switching monitor. Monitor switching. Dude. We've got we've got we've got a lot going on here. Just got to switch the monitor, folks. Hang tight. That simple. Monitor's coming on. When monitor comes on, we'll uh, we'll move it over. Takes a second. There it is. Outstanding. And we are back in business. See, this is this is much better. You guys. Oh, that was easy. Oh, yeah, it's a cakewalk. I mean, everything is all, we've got it all automated now. Let me gather my windows. <sighs> windows. <sighs> Come on up from over here. Come on. There they are. Ah, oh, feels so good to be home. Welcome to the Don't Unfriend Me show. Sorry for the screw up. Um, but th this is this is the way it should be. This is, uh, this feels much better. Got the lights all going here. Everything's set. Let me just go ahead and hit one more light, and then we're, we able to rock and roll. We don't have time for this tonight. We got a Colorado Avalanche game, and uh, that's uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. Not that you're not important, folks, but you're not. Just kidding. All right, let's get to it. We got a lot to do. Liv looks lovely. Leroy, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here, hey, buddy. Thank you. It's good to be so, here. 
so we got a lot going on, folks. Uh, just to let you know, we, we've got a couple new things just to give you just some updates. Dumb Club is officially launched. Terry, man, that guy's awesome. He is working his butt off to make sure because you got to understand it, 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 you know, it's monthly. So in order to qualify for the, the boxes and the gifts and the videos and then the discounts and then the newsletter, you got to pay your subscription. So he's got to write all that code and base all those sites and he's going to do all that stuff. So he's building all of this right now, this this entire network for people. And the things are just incredible what you get. So uh, this is the good news. You don't have to go ahead and try to memorize news.thedumbshow.com or thedumbshow.com slash club slash news. Oh my God. I, I made it easy. I went and bought uh, thedumbstore.com, thedumbshow.com, you know, and then uh, the dumbclub.com and the dumbnews.com. So now we we own it all. So uh, yeah, I can't imagine what else we're going to get into. Maybe maybe the prophylac the dumb prophylactics.com will be next. But right now, I uh, had a comment, but I'm going to leave it. No, what are we going to say? Nothing. Only Come dumb on, honey, say it. It's for the show. We you can't can do, do that. You got. It's funny, so say it. Dumbporn.com. Oh <laughs> yeah, oh. that's what I said. Oh. I, no, can't can't believe, only, I can't believe only you dumb. said that. That's, Horrible. Right, only dumbs.com or dumb hope. Oh, only only dumbs.com. Right? Like oh, that. oh, that's so good. That's, that's good. And everyone can swipe left. Ah, I'm here I, all night. I love it. It's just wonderful. Good stuff. Uh, all right. Well, we, we got a big show. We don't have a lot. We started off with, uh, we're going to start with a new topic, just kind of a warmer topic. Uh, and, and, and the reason why is, is because I, I just think it's, uh, it's something we got to do, and and the reason why is because it's about hockey, but it's funny. You're not you're not going to be upset um, about this at all, and uh, I, I want to explain it. Olivia can help explain it. Uh, pranks from the NHL. Now she just heard this, and and had no idea about it. So bear with me that she uh, she just heard heard this thing, but. Um, this is kind of a rivalry that's been going on. Now, Now, first of all, Colorado and the Minnesota Wild don't like each other in any way, shape, or form. And they have a long checkered past. Now, there is a goalie who is one of the, one of the most prolific goalies in hockey. He's one of the most winningest goaltenders of all time. And his name is uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, also known as the Flower. And here's a picture of Mark, he now plays for the Minnesota Wild, and you know is just amazing. One of the winningest goaltenders of all time. Now, this is where the story gets interesting. Mark Andre Fleury is an absolute just hoss at practical jokes. This guy is known as the biggest practical joker in the NHL, and I have followed him and what he has done. He took Gabriel Landeskog's gear and took all of his pants, his skates, his his shoulder pads, oh. his helmet, and he wrapped it in saran wrap in a ball that was six feet wide <laughs> and wrapped it. So he would put the boots, wrap them, make a ball. Then he would put the helmet, make a ball. So you would get one thing at a time coming out of this thing, and it would take him forever. He taped all of Sidney Crosby's sticks together. Uh, so he took all his sticks and he wrapped them in, 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 uh, in, in hockey tape. Um, the, the guy does things that are just, he's a prankster. And he knows everybody in security at all the arenas. So he goes in and he's just like, hey, man, can, can you hook me up? And he lets them into the opposing team's locker room and he does crazy stuff. So Yakov or, or Duheim is a, is a guy also known as Dewey, is now a Colorado avalanche. And he is, is uh, it was a former Minnesota Wild player. So the Minnesota Wild and the Avs played last week. Now follow with me here. And they were in Minnesota. And uh, and Duheim decided to go ahead and get Flurry because now they're not on the same team, but they're friends. And he wrapped his entire uh, vehicle in toilet paper. Now, this isn't smart. And I'll tell you why. Because Theo Flurry is like me. He doesn't have levels. <laughs> he has first gear and he has fifth gear. And this is the story. Here it is. Watch this. Now, 
now on the prank scale of one to ten, this is this is this is That's minor like league three. stuff. Yeah, and it's not. It's nothing. It's like I mean, it's horrible. Yeah. Like this is so embarrassing because Flurry, who is a master prankster, uh, I, I mean, this guy has 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 done intercepting phone calls of of uh, opposite players' rooms when they order room service, and and he calls in and says, actually, uh, you know, if this if the, if they call in with room service, let me know. Uh, and I'll deliver it for my friend. And then he ultimately delivers it to his teammates. And that person's waiting for their food and they don't get it. He, he, this guy's next level prankster. So here's, here's what happened when Flurry got out of practice. I think that's job well done, gang. Now all the wild players are laughing because they know. Why, why did they blank out the app's faces? Because it's a joke, oh. right? They're doing it like it's a top secret okay. mission. But all the wild players are laughing their asses off in the coaches because they know that th they're like, this is this is low rent. I mean, Flurry's going to kill this guy. <laughs> oh, <the> dude, you know? <laughs> he did it himself. And you hear him. He's like, did Dewey get him? Because Duheim was there for him. I mean, Dewey just came over here a month ago, a month and a half. So they, they're, they're all friends. And he was an ex-teammate. I know I did Dewey get him and everyone's like, yeah, and they're like, oh dude, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> did you want some shaman? Think, might be one of our old teammates, Brendan Duhay, maybe. Oh, he's gonna get it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have anything to do with it. Look at Kiprasov. He's like <laughs> Kiprasov's laughing his ass. This is this is their number one scorer. He's a rookie. He he's a good dude. He's Russian, but he knows. And I guarantee you, he's taking a picture of it and he's sending it to Flurry right now, who's in the locker room. I guarantee it. You came. <laughs> He's an old friend. No, it's the kind of friend, yeah. I don't know some days. Um, you know what? I'm pretty proud of Brendan Duane, right? Uh, I'm kind of proud of him, though. He did a good job. Well done. That is basically him just going, I am going to screw over this guy so bad, and he's already planning on how he's going to destroy his life. I'm going to learn, though, is like we're going back to Colorado next week. That's safe, right? I should do that. That's on it. Going home, sit tonight, boys. All right, so that's part one. Now, here is the retaliation video. And I told you, this guy doesn't have any gear. Duhame's car has a flower bed installed on the top of the hood with flowers, along with a for sale sign, and... No tires oh. on cinder blocks. All the tires are chained together underneath the SUV. <laughs> Jesus. Here's 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 the first yeah, tire, yeah. and he's up on blocks. We left 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 him the lug nuts. It says, "If you would like to know where the keys to the." lock R and the tools to put the tires back on, send me an apology, <laughs> Mark Andre. So he went into his trunk and took the key, which is which yeah. is distinct to the the tires to the vehicle. So he can't even put them back on because he doesn't even have the key. And he took that too. <laughs> I mean That's next a dick move. I love it. Here we go. No, look at Dave. It's just like, what the shit? I think that's Manson, actually. Yeah, there's uh, it's like a over the top. there's Scott. <laughs> He's like, it's over the top. The suspects. No security. What are we paying these guys for? No security. What are we paying these guys for? Tonight's game's gonna be fun. Oh. This is only a Jeep. 
I need a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> I need a ride home. We got a call from their video guy and was like, Flurry just did something. They went to Home Depot this morning is all I know. Dude, that's so, gonna scratch paint and everything. Well, <laughs> dude, it, 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 first of all, it's a mop car. I mean, the guy the guy doesn't make yeah. an ungodly yeah. amount of money. Flurry gets paid five, six million a year. Uh, probably a little less than that, four point five to five. But this, you know, Duhame probably, you know, two and a quarter. So you know, it's uh, it's it, just to understand how amazing hockey is. Uh, that's that's the relationship that these guys have, and uh, it, it, this will go on now. I mean, this is going to go on all season. This isn't over, and and that is that is a huge retaliatory up uptick because some toilet paper that wasn't even oh, wet. Yeah. I mean, he could have paper mache it and made it horrible for him. But to to put a, a a you know a deathbed on top of the hood and then steal his 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 hub key and remove his tires and put it on blocks, I told you, man, Mark Andre Fleury, he doesn't know how not how to screw around. So uh it, very funny. Something that uh, I figured That's you guys hilarious. Would, yeah, it is. It's gonna it be an interesting good. game tonight. Uh, Hockey. I will be. Sh- I'll be shocked if Duhame doesn't throw an elbow on Flurry when, <laughs> when he goes. I think he'll. I think he'll go by. He'll get because Duhame's a crease player, so he'll get in the crease. And I have no doubt in my mind that, that he'll throw a stick in the ribs or just just give him a quick elbow to the head. Just just something a little bit when he's flying by to let him know you dick, you upgraded uh, to the next level. Yeah, what I'd love to see him do is like do something with his pads or his gear or yeah, saw yeah, his yeah. stick almost almost in half. So shit just keeps breaking throughout <laughs> the game and we score. It's like all of a sudden it's 46 to nothing. And we're like, well, I should teach you. Like all right. in his it, shoelaces or something, right? Yeah, 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 do something. I mean, he is the yeah. flower, but that's why he put the flower bed on his thing because it's Marc Andre Fleury, the flower, right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, kind of funny. All right, let's get into it. We got a lot to do tonight. We're starting off with anti-Israel activists commit insurrection. Um, th- we're seeing an increase in Muslim um, bravo and bravado, and and uh, they're starting to do things that are are just kind of next level. And what what J Sixers were accused of for insurrection and. Um, We've seen it. They they went inside the Capitol and they did a sit-in and there were some arrests and obviously protesting the Palestinian war with Israel. And let's be correct. It's it's not Palestine. It's it's Hamas. And we've got to make that really, really clear. Yeah. It, Israel's war is not with Palestine. Palestine, Palestinian people are getting killed, uh, but that's war. And uh, th- that's what happens. And, and I'm certainly not a proponent of it. I've seen the photos. I've seen the atrocities. It's not like Leroy and I don't know. Okay, you we know, saw the same shit in Iraq. Yeah, that raises a really good point. And I'm trying to start, uh, I'm, I'm trying to recall any historical examples. Uh, does it seem like, and I'm asking you, Matt, this is a personal question. Does it yeah. seem like the left likes to attack people, but the right likes to attack government? Yeah, I, I think we've gotten there, and 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 I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. We talked a little bit about last night that you take a look at the ACLU, you look at the uh, the AARP, you look at the NAACP. The, 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 these are liberal organizations. Yeah, and 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 liberals used to ensure that liberty was protected. And they were the free speech party. And, and I think one of the best quotes I've ever heard was from the lead singer of Sex Pistols who said, I, I never thought in my time that Democrats would become big government and root for the man yeah. and Republicans would be challenging government and, and being the kind of the, the, the monkey wrench in the machine, to paraphrase. I, I don't have the exact quote, exact quote, but it's interesting. And I think, you know, I think if George Carlin was alive today, he, he wasn't necessarily pro-conservative. Uh, he 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 disliked government altogether. I, I don't think right. he would. I think he would probably flip a little bit and and probably be a little bit more to the conservative side and a little bit more frustrated. Even though he was oh. not a believer in God and a Christian in any way, shape, or form. I mean, he was an atheist. But um, sure, I but think I mean, he, I think he'd be challenging Democrats. There's a big portion of that though that basically says, look, I mean. It, he was he's a lot like you actually where he is 
socially liberal, but but to your point with the anti a lot of the anti-government talk, I mean, that within itself, when you distill it down, the messaging is to stop funding these idiots. Yeah. Here's the uh, here's the thing. I'm going to go across everybody, but it says, I never thought I would live to see the day when the right wing would become the cool ones giving the middle finger to the establishment and the left wing becoming the sniveling, self-righteous, twatty ones going around shaming everyone. Uh, that's That's ones? pretty... Right, twatty, and then you've got another one. Which, if you have any doubt, where this guy wokeness is a weapon being used by the privileged to stomp on the working class. Uh, this guy, you know, was is not. I mean, the Sex Pistols. Anybody who's listening to the Sex Pistols knows for for damn sure that they are not a conservative group. But more and more people are waking up to this DEI, and 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 almost to the point where Democrats want to go back to a place of racial prejudice and division. And and you have to wonder, because in the 50s and the 60s leading into the 70s, the Democrats, since the beginning of American history, have always perpetuated racism and segregation and and you know that that African Americans or people of color were less uh, than than white people. This has been a Democrat trope for a long time. And it's almost like they lost that with the civil rights movement, knowing they had to do this. And and this is almost like a long game like Hydra, you know, that their secret yeah. under yeah. feelings are still anti-black, anti-people of color. And, and they're going back to this. And this is the old adage, when people accuse you of something, look at what they're doing. And Democrats calling us Nazis, but them wanting to censor speech and take away guns and have popula no populism and globalism, social socialism wrapped up in in the guise of, of capitalism. It, you have to ask yourself the question, uh, are Democrats just going back home to mom? Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's that whole thing, everything you just said, it, it a little bit of it from yesterday too. It reminds me of that Reagan speech where he said that uh, uh, um, if if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the form of liberalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah I had I put that post up the other day too, and it's a great quote. Um, Liv, you've yes. had a chance to uh, kind of be exposed to this, but I wanted to get your thoughts uh, when it comes to this video. I want you to watch this. We've been talking a lot about J six and. And 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 stuff like that, but this this is concerning because there's already been another insurrection by Democrat standards, which is if you interrupt a legal proceeding or where legislation is taking place. Well, that was done by Bowman, um, the the state legislator who pulled the fire alarm and did it willingly, right? Um, and that was interrupting. You look at Judge Kavanaugh. And Judge Amy Coney Barrett and their confirmations had someone st uh, break into um, the Capitol floor and do a sit-in, which is insurrection. Um, you've had 186 BLM riots that cops were attacked, federal, where law is being hit and federal buildings are being burned down. These things are insurrection by definition. And I, I've been hard on the J6ers. I mean, I... I've been absolutely adamant that that is horrendous. But if you're going to sit here and, and pretend that this hasn't happened, your standards, just like the standards of impeachment or just like the standards right. of, of prosecuting people for trumped up charges, no pun intended, you guys, you guys did this with SCOTUS judges. Liberals did. They're the ones that tanked Mexican judges under Reagan. This is not the first time you guys brought up sexual harassment charges against Clarence Thomas. You did it against Kavanaugh. You did it against Gorsuch. You called Amy Coney Barrett a Stepford wife, and you went after her. I mean, th this is this is normal everyday stuff for liberals. But this video is interesting because it puts it in perspective. Liv, I'm going to have you comment directly when we're done, and kind of just give it a watch and tell me what you think. Okay, here is Harris Faulkner from Fox News. We're hoping to bring you this video within seconds. Uh, this video is not great. I'm sorry. From inside the Capitol building, anti-Israel protesters just shut down the largest cafeteria on the Senate side. And they were chanting, according to our producers there, they were saying that the Capitol police are chanting everybody out or be placed under under arrest. And the protesters were shouting back, uh, this is the house of the people. The Senate can't eat until Gaza eats. Fox News has now learned that many of those activists are the same ones who interrupted Secretary oh Lloyd God. Austin's testimony earlier today during a Senate Armed Services hearing that was looking into the military budget. 
Now, we have seen so many of these protesters now show up even outside the Wilmington, Delaware home of the president of the United States. They follow Biden around everywhere he goes now, every state. Mm -hmm. And they may not have been protesters, but the vote against him that was uncommitted in places where we've seen so much anti-Israel movement, like Michigan, in those places, those voters were above 100,000 voting uncommitted, not for Biden. So this is a political side. We have the video. Roll. So here it is. So protesters gathered, shutting down the largest cafeteria on the Senate side of, the cap of Capitol Hill, making their voices heard, going back and forth with cops. They probably have a big student. How is that? How is that not? That's well, it, uh, an insurrection. How is that not the exact same thing that they it's went just ahead and put people? Age of them? They look yeah. like they're kids. Uh, Mom, well, I'm going to we'll go to the Capitol today to war wage a war against salad. Yeah, uh, let's live lives first. Liv, you got to give it to her because we'll take all her talking points. Liv, go ahead. Sorry, I'll shut up. It's that they all should be arrested for a treason. I mean, if that's what you're going to do for January 6th, and I don't condone January 6th, but I mean, gosh, they're they're doing the same thing. Same, mm -hmm. isn't that the same building as well? Well, no, no police officers were killed. Well, yeah, they weren't killed in J six either. Uh, and just because you're not breaking things and just because you're not setting off fire extinguishers, it, you, you, there were people in J6 who were arrested who did nothing, who simply went inside. I, I mean, the J6 grandma, we did the article on her, is a prime example, and she's facing a year in jail, uh, $200,000 in fines, and, and the same amount in lawyer fees, and she's a retiree. Uh, there's no way. So the question is, is why is it that the left can do these things? Right. And the right, the right can't. What's the difference? I mean, I mean, and that's what I'm asking is, is, is tell me the difference. What is the difference? And if there isn't one, then, then we have to reset the standards. Uh, Leroy, and then uh, Liv, if you want to circle back, you can. Okay. Leroy, what go ahead. is the difference? Uh, the difference uh, can be boiled down to one word, hypocrisy. Um, mm -hmm. To Matt's point, when we're talking about standards, um, Standards that are equally applied lead you down this idea of individualism. And that is something that does not exist on the left. It only exists on the right. So because these people are part of this emotional group, right, then they can just kind of throw away those standards. They can throw away those the, that, that idea that, oh, I'm not a hypocrite. Yeah, you are, right? Because, again, to Matt's point, <laughs> if you were that inflamed as well you should have been about january the 6th then again standards that are equally applied suggest that oh then any uh, um any sort of protest like that any sort of uh, uh, uh petition or anything like that that turns violent you should immediately be against but we know that that's not the case because it happened in the three years uh prior to the last year of trump right before uh, coronavirus, where there was just nothing but mass protests and chaos in the streets. So it's that idea of you're willing to accept that you're a hypocrite, you just won't call yourself out for it, and you don't know how to apply standards evenly. This is a video, uh, good points, Leroy, for sure. The, these are, I don't have to stroke your ego every time, I'm just going to move on. You, you say, you don't no. say dumb shit. Um, so sorry, I don't get an ego stroke, but this is uh, in Dearborn, Michigan today. Um, take a listen. America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not Malcolm X was a millionaire side Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system uh, that would allow such atrocities and such devilry to, a ha to happen and would devilry. support it, such a system does not deserve to exist on God's earth. And so when these fools ask us if Israel has the right to exist, the chant death to Israel has become the most logical chant shouted across the world today. Imam Khomeini recognized that Israel is an evil settler colonialist project. He realized it is a cancer and he established this day. Israel before this, brothers and sisters, 
was a sacred cow. Nobody could criticize Israel. Everybody was terrified of being anti-Semitic. Everybody was afraid of them. But now the people of conscience very openly will criticize Israel. They recognize Israel for what it is. Israel is ISIS. Israel are, they what? are Nazis. They are fascists. They are racist. The people of the world now. Listen, I, there's, <clears throat> there's only so much oh. that bullshit I can take. I, I want to be real, real clear. Tonight's episode isn't going to be popular, and I'll be surprised if the Groypers don't come back. Um, because I'm just going to be really honest. Um, if this happened in 1980 and you replaced Gaza with Iraq, nobody would fucking care. Nobody would care. And if you were going to replace Afghanistan with Gaza, nobody would care. And Bosnia, Herzegovina, nobody would care. Syria, nobody would care. Yemen, Egypt, Portugal. Uh, we can go back to Mogadishu. We, we, we can even go back to Afghanistan 1. We can go to Vietnam if you want. We can go to Korea. It, the United fuck man Nagasaki and Bikina Island. We flashed seven hundred and thirty thousand people two separate times in an accumulated mm -hmm. event that almost killed a million people instantaneously. We now found out today that there's more documents about COVID, and there is a direct link to Wuhan American funding, and it was all hushed. And we're finding papers that are coming out to show that Fauci covered it up. Fauci was absolutely responsible, and 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 this lays it at the feet of the United States government. Go figure. So. So we can pretend that Israel is the big bad wolf, but everyone needs to remember and really remember what happened on October 7th. Who started it? What happened? Yeah. What happened in 2017? What happened in 2020? What happened in 2012? What happened in 2006, 2002, 1998, 1999? The Palestinian people elected Hamas, put Hamas in power. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to be really honest with you. America created Al-Qaeda, and probably we created ISIS. Israel created Hamas. They created their own worst enemy. And this isn't the first time that it's happened. Russia has done it. Russia has created brigades of people and brigades of, of, of uh, people who are against Russia. This We saw this in the Donbass region. We saw this with Eastern Ukrainians and Russians on the border of Russia who are, have been in the Civil War. Most countries create their own worst enemies. But this shit is what you get when you allow unfettered access to illegal immigrants in our country. Everyone's like, oh, squatters. Yeah, that's fucking a scare tactic. Nobody's going to squat your home. You don't know anybody who's been squatted. Give me a break. Fentanyl. You don't touch drugs. You don't hang around that stuff. It's not going to get you, okay? It's not going to get you. And yes, we got to be worried about our kids. I'm not saying we don't worry about fentanyl. Now listen to what I said. But if you don't touch that stuff, just like AIDS, if you don't go around fucking everybody without a condom, you're not going to get it. There's things you can do to protect yourself. But when it comes to unfettered access to illegal immigration, you bring in people who have no desire to see the American way through. They want to destroy this country. They don't care about this country. They're just like Democrats moving into Texas or moving into Virginia. They still vote blue, even though they're fleeing from the blue ways of politics. These people are fleeing terrorist groups, and then they come here and they do the same thing. Not all. Not all. But they start off entering our country illegally, and that's not a good start. This is happening in, in England. This is happening in France. This is happening in Germany. Europe is falling to mass illegal immigration, and they are losing their culture. Because I don't care what anyone says, Muslims and Americans are not the same. When it comes to the extremist beliefs of the way they treat women, the way they enact criminal justice, the way that they feel about life, martyrdom, th th there, there is very little in common with Islamic extremism. And that is bred inside the Quran. Now, you can say it doesn't. That means you haven't read the Quran. And I'm not saying that all Muslims are bad because it's the largest religion on the planet. There are more Muslims than, than any other 
in this world when it comes to a religious group. But if you're going to sit here and pretend that there are not extremists in the millions in these countries, or even yeah. slightly extreme, you're lying to yourself. Now, that's a very long intro. I apologize, but I'm very frustrated, very upset seeing this shit in my country because I've we saw this overseas. And anyone who's military who did time overseas, we've seen it, and we know what this fucking means for America, and we are going to lose a generational war to this stuff. Remember when they said uh, Sharia law is coming? That was bullshit. 2014, tea partiers that went from the Koch brothers and left Ron, uh, Ron, uh, Ron Paul. This is what we should be worried about coming to America. It was just as bad as the, the red curtain in Russia and socialism in the 60s and the 50s, this is the big threat. This is having people who are radicalizing on our own soil. This is when right. you can get pockets of 60, 70,000 people who want to kill America. And if you don't believe it can happen, go look at Minnesota, look at Michigan. Entire fucking counties are radicalized. This is the next civil war. This. Sorry, Leroy, go ahead. Can I go? Because I got to leave. Yeah, Livy, I'm sorry, baby. Go ahead. I, 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 I didn't mean leave. to do I haven't done that in a while. Go ahead. So it's extremely frustrating and people think that just because they're trying to flee their country and come to America, that they're going to be American and they're going to live the American life. No, just, just because they come here does not mean that they're going to abandon all of their ideals and their morals and what they believe. Right. I have run into Middle Eastern men that have treated me like they treat their women and I, I didn't take it, but um, they have absolutely no problem with treating American women like they treat their women back there. And they have no respect for us. None. And they are going to continue to do that. And it's completely appalling and it's sickening. And it's the fact that, and I blame a lot of this on Biden. And yeah. just because he had a bug up his ass and mm, hated Trump so much that he just wanted to prove Trump wrong, I'm just going to Nix everything Trump did and just reverse everything he did. Yeah, 96, and, 96 executive orders to overthrow what Trump put in place. And the worst yeah. one was opening the border and not continuing the wall and letting it become open borders because this is what happens yeah. when you've got open borders. And it's not just the Hispanic illegal immigrants now. Now you've got the Muslim illegal immigrants coming over and now you've got this thing with Israel and Hamas and it's spilling over onto our shores and it's not just localized to other areas. I mean, it's everywhere. Hayden lost a friend because that friend is Muslim and Hayden has Jewish friends and Hayden will not oh, stop God. being friends with her Jewish friends. It's bad. And she actually texted Hayden and was like, I cannot, I cannot associate or be friends with somebody who believes in the murder of innocent people. And this is a seventh grader. A fucking seventh grader said that to Hayden. And it's not just adults. It is they teach their children this, and they are extremely dedicated to what they believe, and they teach their children at an extremely young age. And it's, it's going to boil over, and something's going to happen, whether it be a terrorist attack or they do something, or like you said, a civil war. So, something is going to happen. Yeah, and and yeah, that's. I mean, that's the biggest concern is because the ideologies are different. America does not have the. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to hand it right over. Americans do not have the stomach for jihad. They they don't know what it looks like. They don't know what it feels like. They don't understand how extremely exhausting it is to live under a constant threat of terrorism. And Leroy will tell you that we do not have the stomach for it in this country. We have lost that ability. And and and, and that is a 50,000 person war. You don't need three, four, 10, 20, 30 million people to rage war from a terroristic standpoint. 50,000 is more than enough to extract a heavy toll on the United States. And you're seeing entire counties uh, mass populated with extremism now, and it, it has become an existential threat to this country. What's to say if they don't have different factions in Maine, 
cities, LA, New York, uh, New Orleans, you know, Houston, all, you know, in ev- different parts of the country. What's to say if you've got these factions that are planning something, do something at the same time and just take down these big cities? I mean, what's what's going to well, happen? Well, you, you got to understand, I mean, to take down an entire city, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, something. I don't want to add, uh, <laughs> give anyone any ideas. Uh, but right, I'll, but, I gotta go. I yeah, go, get out of here. But I don't want to give anyone ideas. But my point is, is that uh, taking out a city, if you want to know, Liv, what was that Denzel Washington movie with uh, Annette? Dude, uh, Annette you should be asking me. Yeah, do you know what it is, Leroy? Which movie? Uh, it Denzel Washington and Annette Benning, oh, and it's about the terrorists in New York and the cells. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Not, uh, it what, had what's uh, it called? Uh, yeah. uh, had Tony Shalhoub in it. Oh, yeah. Boy. What was the name of it? Liv's looking it up. It's not the town, sure. of course. But, no, but that's it's, about um, the bank robber. It's, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, and Bruce Willis is the general. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that, it, oh, it's, um, name. gosh, I, I can't even. And, and, and it's a movie that I absolutely love. Oh, it's uh, good. And I, I can't remember what it is. Um, Liv's looking it up right now. She's, she's taking a look. But the point is, is that if you want to know what it's going to be, watch that movie. Because that movie will put it in a fucking nutshell for you. Go ahead, Lee Ryan. Oh, You've been so patient. Thanks, buddy. Oh, you're, no, you're good. Um, I will tell you why this shit spreads like wildfire. Um, the siege. This, this, the siege. This, the the siege. siege. That's right. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna write that down because I'm gonna. This Folks, siege. if you have not watched that movie, you need to go watch that movie because if you want to know what's coming, that movie it's called The Siege with Denzel Washington and Annette yeah. Bening, and it will it basically. They basically wall off New York. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, buddy. So here's the problem, right? I've thought of, I put a lot of thought into this, this kind of thing. It's easier to manipulate people with emotions than it is with, with, you know, introducing facts where people have to have some sort of stable mental faculties in order to process anything. Right. So basically when you follow that to the, it's, it's, ultimate logical conclusion what that means that it's it is that it's easier to spread hate than it is education and when your whole ideology is based on destroying the infidel right because ba- people are basically lazy especially I, and i'm gonna say this i don't even care who mails me ends up at my doorstep i will say this the the, the people in that part of the world I don't think that they want to be educated. They want this war. They're yeah, they're they brainwashed. They are brainwashed to the point of it, 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 to Matt's point. It's a holy war, right? And most Americans are not ready for that. They're not willing t- to deal with that level of commitment with someone who is willing to become a suicide bomber and clack off in the middle of a mall or some shit. So you have yeah. to be really it, it, once you get into that mindset, you realize, oh, yeah, this shit is legit. So for all of the leftists that are out there going, oh, we shouldn't have guns to protect ourselves. That's what the police are for. No, you're an idiot. I also see this. You know, Matt said it, too, uh, that not all Muslims are terrorists. That's true. But yeah. all terrorists are leftists. Yeah, and Muslim. <laughs> and, <laughs> or, or extremists. I mean, I mean, and let's face yeah. it. I mean. It's not the days of the IRA. It's not the days of, you know, extremist groups or alt-right factions that are causing terrorism in the United States. Now, you can look at mass shootings and stuff, but predominantly most of the terrorism in the world is owned by Muslims. And and, and you just – I'm sorry. That's just the truth. And, and you yeah. can get upset at that. And you can get mad. And I'm not bashing on Muslims, just like I'm not going to allow people to bash on Jews. But everyone who who's sitting here and pretending that Palestine – listen – if you want any understanding of of what the Palestinian people are reflected and looked at by Muslims, none of them will allow them in their country. Can you imagine if Canada was getting attacked by Russia? What, do you think we wouldn't open up Buffalo? you think we wouldn't open up right. Washington and Seattle and allow these Canadians to come in here and be refugees? Of course we would. We would take our Canadian brothers and sisters, except for Mel, uh, in our in our bosom and take care of them and hold them. <laughs> I take and love Mel. Them. Mel, you always I, have a spot I'd, here. I'd take Mel, but but that nobody wants nobody wants Palestinians, and the reason why is because ninety one percent of them want 
to destroy Israel. And the Muslim countries may not love Israel, but they want peace. Saudi Arabia wants peace. Kuwait wants peace. Egypt wants peace. Yemen wants peace. Even fucking Beirut and Lebanon want peace. There are factions of groups that have been put into power because of the amount of money, just like the drug cartels. They influence something different than drugs. Uh, it is completely as addicting, and that is hatred for the infidel. They sell a different type of drug. Their drug is hate. And they are just as powerful as the drug cartels in Mexico. And terrorism reigns supreme because you're not ready for that type of terror. You're not, you're not ready for it. The United States, because here's the thing. If we're like, all right, well, I've got a rifle. I'll go out and fight them. Sure. But they won't fight you that way. No. Guerrilla tactics. They won't fight. Yeah. They, they, they don't fight head to head. They're not, they're not the English. They're not going to go ahead and muzzle to muzzle. And No. They'll use snipers. They'll use IEDs. They will bring as many people into a death zone as possible, and they will drag you out there by putting one in, in your in your buddy's liver. And when all of the rest of the you know ambulance and squads and fire departments show up, they'll they'll bomb the whole fucking place. They will go into a civilian establishment, and and it's not about. Here's the thing: we see them as enemy combatants, but we can't tell who the enemy is. They see everyone as the enemy: children, women. Men, it doesn't matter. Everyone's the enemy. So killing the innocent is just as good as killing the warriors. We don't, we don't have that mindset. We believe in quarter. We believe that, that there has to be some sort of give and take in a conflict. They don't think that way. And the reason why the English lost against the Americans is because the, the Americans threw away civility. And if you go back and look at the American Revolution, we didn't quarter troops we started targeting officers. We started doing things that were uh, more guerrilla tactics and 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 doing skirmishes. We changed the way war was fought. It was no longer cannon and musket against each other in a pecking line, which is the way England has been fighting battles for 400 years. We started skirmishing and we started sending small groups to come out with freaking sharps rifles to remove the leadership element of English and then retreat and then put them in a trap. These are the things that terrorists do because they don't have the numbers. They don't have the aircraft. They don't have the weaponry. So they use uh, the same thing that the Filipinos used against the Japanese. When, if, if I may. when Yeah, please, um, I'm sorry, man. Had, I, I'm, I'm hot. No, you're good. When, you're, when you had that video playing, right, and all I hear was that, that cocksucker going on about um, death to America and this and that, right? And I'm thinking yep. to myself, you know what? We've got these, right? What do yep. you have in your country? What is it in your country that you have that allows people to do what they do, right? Because this is the only country that I'm aware of in the world that, that holds such a value on individuality. So when he's talking about death to America, what he's really saying, he's not talking about the land. He's not talking about the rivers or the borders. That's right. That's what he's right. talking about is the values yes, that make the this country great. What he's talking about is death to these three documents, right? That's what they hate. That's what they want to get rid of is any idea of individual rights. That's right. That's so so freaking spot on. And, and more importantly, it, it's not just the individual rights, but it's the rights to it goes against everything that they believe the rights that women have the yeah. rights that certain religions have the the they don't believe what we believe and it's okay that that that's fine they don't have to right but the way that they the way that we disagree is through discourse the way they disagree is by killing as many humans as possible very different mentalities does that make sense this country was founded on the idea that the British don't tell, they don't get to tell us how to live. They don't get to tell us what to do anymore. We do that. I own my future. And that is not what those people believe. They believe that they know what is best for your women, what is yeah. best for your children. That's why they force their women to wear all black, not allowed to show your face or your hair. That's why they're not allowed to educate their women or you know, to some degree, their children. They think they know 
by the power of the Quran, right? How to run your life better than you do. And to that, I say, fuck off. And and I want to be also real clear about this is, and this is important for me, is there's people who are anti-Semitic. What we're saying right now, some people will say is anti-Semitic because the Semites are Muslim too. Um, it's not just Jews. So that's, that's one of the misnomers. Uh, notice how we're not attacking the people. We're attacking the belief structure. Right. We're attacking their actions. We're going after what they want. We're giving you a, a synopsis of their belief system. It has nothing to do with the color of their skin or who they are, the way about they go, go about things. And, and the problem is, and, and this is where we're going to shift gears, and I really was hoping Olivia would be back by now, but I want to show a video of two people who've endorsed my show. And this is going to create a very interesting dialogue because there is something that's happening in our country. And it's that there is a fraction or a division, a fracture in our country when it comes to Israel. And I, I want to be really conscientious of this because we've experienced the groipers on this show and how they come in and they are completely disingenuous. They, they attack as a group. They kind of force themselves in. It's very much re reminds me of the skinhead movement yeah. in the 80s and 90s in California. They, they, they pretend they're something they're not. And they pretend that they don't hate Jews. No, no we're, we're godly people. We love all men. We right. just are different than, right, they're not. And the Groypers, led by guys like Nick Fuentes and the ones we've had on this show, although they're charming at times, and, and so can Nick, Nick Fuentes can be as well. He says things, and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. And then you have to remember the other things he says. They are there to ensure, and you have heard the conversation change where I've exposed a few of them, where they become evil. And you can hear it in the conversation where they will switch and they'll start calling you a Jew and saying, oh, well, your grandmother was a Jew and you know that's how it works, right? It's in the bloodline, so you're a Jew too. And you're like, you, you hear them and they'll never admit it. I'm not a racist. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not yeah. an anti-Semite. Yes, you are. And if you had a choice... For the Jews to not exist or exist, you would choose not exist. And I can say that as far as Muslims, I have no problem with their existence. But as terrorists, every no. single one of them should be exactly. eradicated and eliminated from the earth. So I get you. You think the Jews are terrorists. Just say it. See, the difference is, is that you pretend and you sit here and say, well, the Jews won't let you talk about them. And the Jews won't let you do this. And the Jews, it's, it's anti-Semitic. But you won't say it. You won't fucking say that you think Jews are terrorists. You will call them imperialists and you'll say they're occupiers and all this, but you won't just say you want them dead. That's what you want. So say it. I would have more respect for Didn't people. Did they say to that say, in that video though? Well, no, no. This is the next one I'm going to show you where you say no. death to America. I understand that. What I'm talking about is this we're moving into there is a group on the right. We saw this with Candace Owens, this argument between Shapiro, who wants the annihilation of Hamas at all costs, no matter what the cost, no matter what the human cost is, and Candace Owens, who is aligning herself with some fairly uh, you know, dangerous rhetoric. Well, there's two people who, are, who have endorsed this show who are now going down that path. And to me, it's extremely challenging. It's extremely hard for me. Because I believe in free speech and I will not block them. I will not not listen to them. I will not do any of those things, but I have to go ahead and respect my lineage mm -hmm. and what I have experienced on my side of the family from a Jew's perspective and a Nazi's perspective, because I have both in my family. And if you look up Albert Speer and you look up, he was my uncle. And you can look at the photograph and you'll be like, holy shit, it looks just like Matt. I look more and more like him each day because there's only older pictures, but he looks just like my dad. 
And so I'm not many generations removed from Nazis in my family. But I've also got my grandmother, Schwartz, who fled Nazi Germany in the Holocaust. So I, I've heard it from both angles. And I will tell you that this rhetoric is how it starts. And you can be, you can challenge Jews and what they're going through and say, we don't agree with them killing civilians. That's fine. But it's how you say all the other shit leading up to that, which makes you dangerous. I'm going to play this. This is the Hodge twins. Re before yeah, you do ahead. that, real quick, Kevin uh, Bernard has a question, uh, and he would like to know, didn't all of this start with Obama? Um, if I can take that one, Kevin, yeah, go ahead. no, he did not. How long? Oh, not all of that started with Obama, right? This this kind of, uh, this Thank level you. of hate and division has been going on for, it's, since the Bible, the days of the Bible. Um, Obama may have put a different, slightly different spin on things, and he certainly was, God, he had such charm and eloquence in the way he spoke. Um, but basically, if you just, again, if you distill all of that crap down, right, um, what the messaging there was, was that we believe in bigger government, and we believe that the government knows how to run your life better than you do. That was basically his messaging. And whatever the policy was that that followed along with that, right, I think that's where you're headed with this, is, you know, didn't Obama, at least in some way, is it his name you didn't like? I don't know. I don't know. But that's not my point. My point is that um, no, it did not start with Obama. No, it didn't start with Obama. It's been going on for a thousand years, dude. Yeah, the, 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 you're talking 3,000 years of history that the nation of Islam, and and this it, it, this isn't just with the Jews. Right. <laughs> this is inner fighting among sects and the Shiites and the Sunnis. Um, th this is not just, this is not just, this is not just a hatred for Jews. Right. In America, when you want to talk about where did, anti-American sentiment come from? Well, can I be honest with you? It, it And this is just being as transparent as I can. It started with the left. And it started yeah. with the, the anti-war movement in Vietnam. Now, there were anti-American sentiment with communism, but it was never done openly. In fact, the communist movement and the suppression that came from that was done through Hollywood. And then it moved into academia. I've said this many times with Ronald Reagan, Montgomery Cliff. Uh, they, they created... Uh, the Writers Guild was full of communists, and they were writing, you know, movies like Doctor Zhivago, and 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 you know, when you're listening from Russia with love and your stuff like that, that came out. A lot of it had Russian sentiment in it. Surprisingly mm -hmm. enough, it, 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 even in the early Bond movies, you can listen that the way that they treated Russians was almost, you know, like they were to be feared, yes, and they were evil, yes, but they were they were clever and conniving, and they had a cause, and you know, and they gave them, you know, some sort of of uh, a, 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 a platform, so to speak. Well, John Wayne, Montgomery Cliff, and 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 others didn't like this. So Burt Lancaster wasn't one of them. But uh, in that group, it was John Wayne, it was Montgomery Cliff, and there was another person, uh, and I can't remember who, but it doesn't matter, who went after communism. Ronald Reagan, Jesus. I can't believe it. Sorry I used the Lord's name in vain. Ronald Reagan, <laughs> my God. He, he's the one that facilitated it and was the reason why he was picked as the president in 1980, ran in 76, um, and had a contested election in the RNC and then was promised just back off, endorse, and in 80, you can have it. Um, but the reason why is because of his actions against communism in Hollywood. He was he was an absolute, just a stalwart when it came to communism. That is where the anti-American sentiment kind of came, but it was always in the closet. It was never out. And when, he, when they expelled Russian oligarchs from uh, and communist sympathizers from Hollywood, they went to academia. They fell back on their liberal arts degrees. They started teaching because that's what they could do because that's all a liberal arts degree gets you is acting, art, or going back and teaching the same shit. And they infiltrated the colleges. And then we've started seeing this matriculate to the high schools, et cetera. But anti-American sentiment truly started in 1970 in that time frame, late 60s, 70s, when it came to after Kennedy was killed 
and then Vietnam, then they took Vietnam. you know John Lennon yeah. and Martin Luther King and Bobby, yep. and it, 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 there just became this anti-American sentiment. And liberals have been pushing it ever since. True. And now it now it's switched. That the liberals want the government. They they want bigger government. They want oversight. They want more government in your life. And that's interesting. And that was the point of the Sex Pistols quote is they wanted smaller government in most of those times. Uh, we got to watch this video. Olivia's not going to be back for it. But but I want to play a little of this and I want you to listen to the rhetoric. Um and and tell me if I'm wrong. Tell tell if you agree with what's being said here, tell me. Tell me why. Just you can come on if you want to. We'll put the number in here. I'll turn on the phone lines. Phone lines are now open. Mods will put the numbers in. Uh, real quick, if you haven't had a chance, linktapgo.com slash the dumb show. The easiest way is to just go to uh, the dumb show.com, click on donate, and you can help support the show. If you like what you're hearing, if you like what we do here, uh, this is the way to help us out is uh, throw a donation, a couple bucks. Hey, if you're taking care of your wife, you're taking care of veterans, you've donated to your local charity, you got your taxes ready to go already. Uh, or you want to buy Leroy a cup of coffee. Or you want to buy Leroy a cup of coffee, then uh, we're, we're willing. But if you haven't done all that, uh, take care of those things first. Here are the Hodge twins, and I'd like, like you guys that. to listen to this. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to feel after this. Yeah, let's see. This is about as tacky as when those Jews was coming out of the damn street, <laughs> out of the subway. <laughs> well, not out of the subway, out of the sewer system. Yeah. Hey, I wonder why all them damn Jews was in a sewer system like that <laughs> with mattresses. Y'all have any comments on that? <laughs> Y'all know Christ is king, right? <laughs> Christ is king. Happy Easter, everybody. Yeah. You probably, I bet you Jewish people offended by um, um, Easter. Yeah, they don't like when he came back. He coming back again, too. <laughs> hey, look at these comments. Pastor, uh, man, I'm just going to hold it, kid. No, it's fine. No, it looks crazy. It looks tacky. What? Oh, man, that looks tacky. Oh, you got to come back on it. You got to come back on it. Yeah, there you go. That looks good go, right man. there. I got the flag. All we need is a cross right there and then put Christ as king. Yeah, to piss off the Jews. Yeah. I hey, y'all got to give it to them punk. Jews. They got some big balls. Especially with them to be in the conservative movement. Yeah. Hey, man, that's crazy, man, how they, they parted ways, Candace and Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. Candace talked all that shit about Negroes. <laughs> Right? Women. Trash Negroes. Put them in a spot. Yeah. Rightfully so. Well, they need to be checked. They need to be checked. I check my people all the time. Yeah. But as soon as you criticize a damn Jew, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. Yeah. I'm starting to think Jewish community is almost as bad as hey, the LGBTQ. Hey, let me say something about this. Um, you know how I like the LGBTQ. You can't criticize them. You're okay, homophobic. they're trying to be serious. We've all seen that playbook before, right? Oh, no, dude. They're dead fucking serious, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. What are the Jews doing? Candace didn't even, didn't even, she's not anti-Semitic. Her comments about what's going on in Israel is not anti-Semitic. But what did they do? They took it from the LGBTQ playbook, the Democrat playbook. Mm -hmm. Just label you um, a bigot. Yeah. The Jews are doing the same thing the LGBTQ does. Yeah. David Wise is doing the exact same thing uh, Big Tech does, censoring its own people. He yeah. took the exact same argument from Facebook. Yeah, so isn't that a red flag for conservatives? Because I know conservatives, they be sucking Jews. Cock. I think that needs to change. Look. You I'm gonna read, let me read hold up, hold up. I want to see what Let me say saying. something. Let me say something. Criticize man going into the bathroom. Criticize children taking drugs to start, to, you know. And you call anti-homophobic. You call homophobic. You're homophobic. You're homophobic. Now when you criticize Jewish people and their government for killing Thousands of children and women, you're anti-Semitic. Same logic. Same playbook. Yeah. There was a sign of Candace Owens when she first went on a Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Shapiro posted on his, uh, on his Twitter, right? And on the poster board, on the, uh, what do you call them? Billboard, you idiot. <laughs> I very rarely play clips that don't encompass the entire conversation. And I would be happy to play the whole thing for you because it's just more of the same. And all it's going to do is solidify my point. I, I want to be really super clear here. I have no problem with people questioning the way that Israel is handling this conflict. There's no doubt. I told you this was going to happen. It wasn't anti-Semitic when I said it, even though people said I was anti-Semitic, which is interesting. I told you that Israel was going to hold no quarter for these people. 
I told you they were going to kill everybody who got in their way. I said it on this yep. show. And people said I was anti-Semitic. Jews wouldn't do that. Well, no, because you don't understand from, from a government standpoint how Israel responds to being attacked. As I told you, 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 you throw a spitball at them, they will drop a fucking nuke on you. That's, that's just Israel culture. That's the way they've had to be for 3,000 years because if they don't, they will be obliterated. I, I love the Hodge twins. They're one of the reasons I got into this game. And I've used their endorsement for two years, and I'm proud of it. But there's a but. They're wrong. And I hate, They're wrong I hate on doing, this one. I hate, yeah, I, I hate doing a but sandwich. But there is an anti-Semitic money duopoly taking place, people who are pretending to be conservative but who are falling into the realm of fascism. And I want to be clear they're not attacking behaviors. They're attacking a people. They're attacking a religion and an ethnicity because that's what Judaism truly is. It's an ethnic origin and a religion, and so is the nation of Islam. And being Arabic is the, the tie of the theological practices of these countries is inherent in their race and identity as well. I really like the Hodge twins. I don't like this language. And they are cashing in. There's other people who are doing it too. And there's there's hundreds online on Twitter who have went to two, three, four million where Palestinians and Muslims are following. If you go read some of these conservatives on Twitter... They're yeah. being followed by Palestinians. They're being followed by Muslims who hate Jews. And they are getting millions of it. They're making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of this. And I hate to say it, and I, Candace Owens and the Hodge twins can come on my show anytime they want. And they can argue with me if they would like. But they're doing it for the money. They are they are getting groipers who are coming in, like Stu Peters, correct, who are spending ungodly amounts of clicks and attention to them, which is paying them money. This is what's happening. And they're taking advantage of anti-Semites and profiting off of it because the audience is huge. People are flocking to this, this culture. They're, they're leaving Ben Shapiro because he's a Jew. They're leaving Ben Shapiro and saying that he's not an American because he actually cares about Israel. You know what? That all may be true. But there's a way to convey that. There's a way to message that without tying it with the sinew of, of rhetoric that sounds like 1940. The Groiper army is huge. And I told you what would happen when Israel did this. I told you, you're going to find out. People are going to tell you who they are and believe them. I told you this. You were going to see people actually demonstrate that they hate Jews. Yeah. The moment October 7th happened, I said, fuck, you're about to find out people's real identities. And you're finding it out. And and I, I will I will go after Muslims. I'll go after Jews. I've already said Netanyahu. I've already gone after the, the, the alt-right inside of Israel. I've went after Mossad and their tactics. I have no problem saying that Israel reigns war and are completely overreacting in this situation, but I told you that was going to happen, but that is taking the facts. I'm not sitting here and saying dirty Jew and dropping the, you know, K and ends with Ike no, yeah. term. Right. Listen to the I'm language sorry. that's being, that's being projected there. You know, what's wrong with them Jews, man. They, they, they found themselves in a sewer. Look, halt, just stop with that bullshit, right? Yeah. This is a country that fell under attack. Whether or not you think they're overreacting, that's those might be a valid point. A discussion can be had on that. But the moment you start going down that 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 path of, you know, uh, 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 labeling everyone in Israel the Jews who are who are all guilty, no, no. Now you now you sound like the left. That's yeah, now it's you the sound, victim mentality. Yeah. Yeah. It, now you sound like, oh, it's 
it's somebody it's this group over here it's their fault right and that's it, not what the right does real quick read this hodge twins just put this up it says uh, weird how we criticize everybody else on the planet but when we get to jewish people we finally offend people no that's not it I want you to go after Israel. I want you to go after the government. I want you to go after the United States giving them $330 billion over the last 30 years. Yes, I want you to do that. I want you to go after those things. And, and, I, and I love them for it. You're not doing that. You're using right. language. Listen, you, you know, I'm just going to say, you're not, you're not saying niggers when you're talking about African Americans, are you? No. You don't do that. And the reason why you don't do that is because you know that's not a word you use. And you don't call Jews kikes. You don't call them dirty Jews. You don't right. call them vermin. You don't call them maggots. You don't do those things. Or, or claim you don't, that they you come call, out of the you don't call, right. right. And I'll say those words because that's what's happening. You don't call gay people fags. Have some fucking respect for, for human beings. That's the one. And everyone's like, oh, my God, that sounds so horrible coming out of Matt's mouth. It You're was, no was, fucking shit. There was because you don't like, talk like that. There were thousands of people who were literally kidnapped in Israel. Kids, women, kidnapped, not by Palestine, not by Palestine, right? By Hamas, right? Israel didn't start this, but they sure as well intend to finish it. Yep. And that's, that's one of those things, you know what, when you were growing up, I don't, I don't know how many people grew up like I did. Um, like my dad always said that, like, if someone starts a fight, you finish it, right? You make sure that they never want to do that, pull that shit ever again. I, is that foreign to, I mean, that's the whole idea behind the second amendment, isn't it? If someone means to do you will, uh, do ill to you, if they mean to kill you, destroy you, your family, right? 2A basically says, nope, I'm going to end this once and for all. I, I, God, I, I just don't get it. It's well, not a I, war. I, I, I'm telling it, you, they don't they don't believe in this shit, dude. They, they, had not, Jake Shield, they had Jake Shields on. You know Jake Shields is? He's an MMA fighter, five-time world yeah, champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to his page. It just it fucking reads like Mein Kampf. It, it's just that. absolutely anti-Semitic, top and bottom, showing bags of bodies, fake videos all the time, just anti-Israel, anti-Jews, everything on his page. You know, all right, and, here, and, use, this, and, use this as the example, right? Would you be saying the same shit um, about the people who are striking back from Rwanda? Right? What? Those people were being... No, no, I wouldn't. No, I, I just read a comment and it said, they are not overreacting. Tim, who's not overreacting? You be specific. Who's not overreacting? They mean me. The Hodge twins are, are overreacting. Um, it, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't take a hit. I don't care if I take a hit. You know what? I, I have every right to use words and I'm, I'm not using them in racial slurs. I'm using them to, to strike a point that the Hodge twins would never use the N-word. They would never talk about a, a, another person or talk to female and call them coozes. There's just a way you don't talk about people. And when you look at Jake Shields, he's like, oh, I'm not anti-Semitic. But he says all the most – it's just their self-awareness. It's just like the Klan. Oh, we're not racist. We, we don't want to we, – not, we're not horrible people. But you know what? On Friday nights, you, 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 know, you, you lynch black people. Oh right. yeah, but that's just that's just that's just God wants us to do that. He wants us to to keep America pure. It, it, you're just completely disillusioned. You know, again, I'm just going to refer back to it, man. That's why these things are so important because it describes that individual right. It tells you that you are your own property and nobody has the right to come onto your property and arbitrarily string you up to a cross or hang you or anything else. It's an infringement on your personal property. You, in this case, you, 
I hate that. I and, really hate Annalise. those groups. Those mind comp groups, those fucking yep. the the clan. I, I hate all of that. Oh, I can't fucking stand them. Annalisa oh, uh, says I would bet I would bet if it was your family and children that were raped and beheaded and slaughtered, you'd be doing exactly what the Israelites are doing. Uh yeah. I, well, that's the that's the whole point. Can you imagine if somebody came into the United States and and you know, beheaded your daughter or took your your daughter hostage? Um it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm not going to apologize for saying a word throughout history that every African American uses, and, I, and and I'm using it in context. I'm using that word to help people understand that you can't say you can't say those things. You, you, you're, the reason why isn't because it's freedom of speech. There are consequences for your words. And when you go ahead and drop the N bomb on a black person, you're not saying that what it means that you're ignorant. What you mean is, is that I hate you and I want to kill you because of your yeah. color of your fucking skin. That's what you're saying when you drop the N bomb. When you call yeah. someone a kike or a dirty Jew, what you're saying is, is that I agree with what Hitler did and I wish he would have finished the job. That's what you're fucking saying. So for you to sit here and pretend it's just a word, it's just a word, what's the big deal? It is a fucking big deal because words have meaning. And if you can assault somebody without touching them, you can assault them by saying something like that. For anyone to sit here and pretend that the word cracker is innocuous when it essentially is based off of the white people whipping slaves and shearing the skin off their bones, and that's why it's cracker, I'm sorry. I'm not okay with that word. I am all about free speech, and I am a free speech advocate, and I support Candace Owens and the Hodge twins to say whatever they want. I support Jake Shields. I support Nick Fuentes to say what he wants, but I get to call them fucking cocksuckers too, okay? Yep. I get to call every one of them cocksuckers, and I'll you'll, fucking you'll debate know. any of them. I'll debate you'll any notice. one of those fucking people because guess what? You can't win this argument because you don't get to change history. You don't get to change the facts. You can say that Jews are all Zionists and they want to take over the world. Right. Let's go ahead and look at the landmass in fucking e in, in, in the Middle East and look at what they own. Let's look. Before this happened to Gaza and Palestine, this happened to the Jews. The Romans forced them out. And we can sit here and pretend that, that things didn't happen for 3,000 years. But, folks, God was a Jew. And the chosen people of our Lord and Savior are the Jews. You'll, so, you'll you know, you, you better, I'm sorry, Leroy, I just, I got to Go fucking get this out. You better, you better figure it out because you're doing the most unchristian thing in the world. I don't care what the Talmud says. I don't care that they believe Jesus Christ is in hell because guess what? Jesus can handle it. Our Lord and Savior can handle it. He doesn't need you to fight his battles. What he needs you to do is to be a humanitarian and to love your fellow man because those are his instructions. You're not supposed to be judgy. You're not supposed to eradicate a people from this fucking planet. That is not your job. That is his. So if you think that Jesus Christ needs you to defend him and needs you to hate for him, then you are completely disavowing everything he taught. Because he was betrayed by the Jews, and still they are the people, the choice of Jesus. Give me a fucking break. Go ahead, Leroy. I'm sorry. I'm pissed tonight. I'm pissed. I can, I can tell. I can tell. Should we check your blood pressure? <sighs> no. no my, my, you know my blood pressure doesn't get up. I'm fucking cool as a cucumber right now. I'm kidding. My my whole point is, uh, I, and I want everyone to notice a theme here, with, especially with me. Um, I am more than happy to, to blast somebody, right? Um, but it's only after I hear that inflammatory language. It's only after I hear um, the names that are already being dropped and thrown uh, um, because they have the intended effect of throwing darts at somebody, right? They're intending to... to you know, sharpen those those pointy words into sticks to to hurt somebody, right? So when you're hearing like you know, death to America and uh, you know all of the hate that comes out of that, yeah, you're gonna get. I don't normally resort to name calling. I don't. Um, I like to argue facts. I like to argue the point. I like to to distill a person's argument down, 
because ultimately that's what every leftist argument is about it's about you know these this it's about uh how this group of people knows how to run your life better than you do or they think that you don't have the right to be here or you don't have the right to be to even exist right that's every leftist uh, uh playbook that has ever been written um but when you <laughs> but when i hear that kind of inflammatory language I will go to town and I will absolutely destroy verbally any of those fucking pricks. It's it's easy for me. I usually have to monitor what I say and I'm usually pretty good about it. But again, the the entire idea behind behind America, behind these documents is that you don't you don't impose your will on somebody else. That's right. That's what it is. You don't have the right to impose your will on somebody else. All you have the right to do is is to live, pursue happiness, and carve out, scratch out the best life that you can for yourself. Right? Through honorable means. Not through yeah, stealing, I, I, not through theft, not through fucking rape or any of that. Because those are infringements upon somebody else. This is an unwinnable else. position, defending a man. Sorry, I'm getting a video loaded. I apologize, Leroy. You're fine. I'm going so, to use the duck button when you're talking. I apologize. You're good. And that's my point, is that the, in, the entire philosophy that America is rooted in is something that leans to the right. It leans to the idea of the individual having priority over, over the group. You have rights. Our country says so. So for these people to come here and basically tell us death to yeah. America, we don't like your ideas. We don't right. think that you have these rights. You don't have right. the right to defend yourself. That's what they're saying. And it's the same damn message that is being thrown out there from some people that are in higher power because they're elected officials. Some of, some of our elected officials use the same language, just toned down. And I hate, I really hate that. that and the people me. who would be offended by me using the word dropping the N-bomb or, or saying, oh. you know, racial epitaphs with Jews, those are the people who actually feel that way towards them. And that's the problem is those, the, they're the ones that are going to pretend they're offended. It, it's just what the liberals do, right? It, well, we care about life. We care about people. We care about animals. We can, yeah, but you fucking murder babies. You're a hypocrite. You believe in abortion. Oh, well, that's different. It's a woman's right to choose bodily autonomy. You're, you're a fucking hypocrite. That again, when, when that's Nick, my, when that's Nick, my when, point. when Nick Fuentes doesn't seem as radical as he used to, there's a fucking problem in this country because I've went after Nick several times and I will, I've openly admitted that there's things that he says that I agree with. Uh, listen, if you have a problem with multi-billionaires, if you have problems with attorneys, if you have problem with Hollywood lawyers, if you have problems with with an overall uh, false patriotism for, for Jews and you want to go ahead and say that th they care more about Israel than America no matter what, you know what? I, I, I'll tell you what. I don't think it's too far-fetched for people to see similarities the way we feel about the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And I know if we lived over in Germany or we lived over in England or lived over in Japan, that our loyalty to our country would never change. And the Holy Land for Jews and Jerusalem is their home. And just because they are not there in embodiment doesn't mean they're not there in their soul and spirit. And it's and it's and it's one of the one of the key pivotal parts of their religion. So to sit here and say, oh well they're loyal to Israel, well that's they're they're loyal to a different religion and a different calling. And the United States is not their homeland. You can't get upset with people who who love America, but also demonstrate right now an absolute loyalty and love to their homeland. I, I, I'm not saying that I agree because I think your loyalty should be the United States if you're an American at all times, but I don't have the same religious 
implications and beliefs that they do. And Christianity is bred in North America. Yes, we can go back to the Romans and we can go back to the Greeks and we can go back to Europe. We can go back to the Crusades. I understand it. But but the nesting of our religion is wherever we are. The nesting of, of Judaism is in Israel, in Jerusalem, okay? There's a big difference. So when you bring that up, they're, they're anti-American because they care about what's going on in Israel. No, it's, it's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's, that's not what's happening. You can say that. But if you want to go after you know, the money, it's where the money is, that you want to go ahead and say that lawyers are greedy and Jews are greedy, okay, you can say all that shit. That's fine. You can say whatever you want. But how many Jews do you know? Here's my follow-up questions. You ready for these people? Would you ever marry a Jew? Yeah. Would you ever have? No. They, not you, Leroy. Them. No. What, I, I'm not talking to you. I talking to the know. fucking gr- I, I Well, yeah, but why would you? But you are you an anti-Semite? Do you hate no. Jews? No. No. That's what I'm talking to. I'm talking to these people who hate Jews. And who don't say it. Would you ever marry a Jew? No. Would you ever date a Jew? No. Would you ever have a Jew in your house? No. Would you allow your kids to date a Jew? No. Would you ever go and and actually celebrate a day of faith with Jews? No. Would you ever vote for a Jew? No. Would you put out a Jew if they were on fire? See, and and then, but I don't hate Jews. Do you think Jews and Christians should should have a relationship? No. So all you're saying is everything is is all about that you can't stand Jews, you don't like Jews, but you won't openly admit that you hate them, and I can't stand your fucking hypocrisy. I can't stand it. Just admit it. Just say it, and I'll have some respect for you because there are certain races and religions that I'm not a fan of, and I can understand. People can be bigoted. There's nothing. Bigot doesn't mean racist. Bigot means usually based on religious beliefs. If you go back to circa 1496 and you go into the etymology of the word bigot, it had to do with religious implications of your beliefs uh, beliefs against others who are not aligned with your beliefs. That was bigotry. It's still the same thing today. You just, you know that there are differences. You know that there might be a different outcome, but you stick to your beliefs because that's bigoted. It is an ingrained belief that not, not necessarily is verifiable. You know that, and you still choose. I mean, you're racist. I'm bigoted. And it's okay to be a bigot. It's okay to have personal beliefs that don't align with other people. Christians are bigoted towards the LGBTQ community. A lot of them believe that there shouldn't be marriage between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not a homophobe. But say it. Don't pretend that you're just on this path of Christianity and you're only preaching the word of God when really what it comes down to is you hate Jews. And just admit it. Sorry, Leroy. Go ahead, buddy. No, that's exactly. You know what? Everything that we were talking about yesterday with that Ben Shapiro video that's exactly what you're talking about here yeah it's that dancing around the subject where you don't want to use the exact words that that you want to use right so you try to cover it up that's there, right that's what we were talking about when we were talking about those those arguments that whether we're not genuine you already have an idea that's already in your head right that's that's what ben was talking about that's what we covered yesterday i just can't I, I, this Good is deep for arguments. me this is so deep rooted for me, man. I mean, because I saw this shit in California. I'm, I didn't mean to snap at you. I, I just, no. I'm not talking to you because you're not even remotely. Just the, even the fact that you said that, I, you're not maligned with that group. There's nothing about you that that screams hate in anything you do. And and I'm not saying once again. I support Shields is right. I support Nick Fuentes is right. Candace is right to say all these things, and some of it I actually agree with. It's so it's the way you say it. You fucking just crow magnum fucking knuckle dragon yeah. turds. You guys are just espousing shit that nobody's gonna listen to because you sound like the Third Reich. You you sound like Mein Kampf. Yeah. How can you sit here and condone the language you're using and the shit you're saying? I, I can't stand it. Here's here's a video clip I wanted you guys to watch. Watch this. And and this is Nick. I'm going to give him a chance to – I'm not going to talk about Nick and not give him a chance to speak. I, I don't like doing it, but I, I got to at least give him the, the respect because I think when this guy is 30, 32, 34, 35, and he gets married and he has a kid, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna wake the fuck up. I think he's a kid. I think he's never been anywhere. I think he's never done anything, and he's got a platform, and he uses it, and he's not afraid to say it, and that's fine. But I think when he gets a little bit older, he may actually wake up a little bit because he's not stupid. That's the least of his problems. His problem is is that he's ignorant to 
to actually experiential learning. He's very much Matt Damon in Goodwill Hunting. He's never been anywhere. He's never done anything. Yeah. He's never loved anything. And until you have, you can't sit here and not recognize when you're espousing hate. Listen to this. And I and I don't know if this is hate, by the way. I, I don't think I would call it that. I just think it's a lot of fast talk and it and it's not necessarily based in truth. But here it is. God damn it. Sorry, I blasted me twice. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm a little fired up tonight. This is an unwinnable position defending America's support for Israel because, yeah. you know, they'll go down the list and they'll say things like, you know, well, they're our closest ally. You know, they're a special friend in the Middle East. Here's the thing. The Eastern Mediterranean is not a strategically important region. People think Middle East important. What's important in the Middle East is the Persian Gulf because mm -hmm. that's where the oil is. Mm. So uh, do you want to educate about about shipping lanes? You want to go down past the Cape every time in winter? You want to add an extra 3,000 miles to shipping? I mean, there are some canals that are slightly important in the Middle East. Leroy, anything else important about the Middle East? Uh, there's a ton that's important about the Middle East, but even beyond that, his his idea that we're only in it for the oil is misleading um, and, and incorrect. Um, we produce more oil here yeah. yep. than Saudi Arabia does. Right. Yeah. So but, but and, and it's and not say, and it's not that it's and it's not that it's an insignificant amount because yes the area does have have oil but there's so much more to match oh, yeah. their shipping lanes ninety nine point nine percent of all of the goods that we hold you know that we that we get through Amazon is sent here on a ship right so free shipping lanes is something that's kind of important you shut those down. You shut down world economy. So, yeah, and, and it's, it's not, not just it's shipping not right. lanes. the The imports and exports, the amount of money that's spent. Uh, if, if you oh, want to yeah. look at most of the free cash flow in the world, it is right there in the Middle East. Our dollars are tied to OPEC. Our dollars are tied to oil. Yes, so it is important. Also, from a strategic standpoint. If you own the Middle East, you own Africa, and Africa is going to be the next hotbed that countries are going to be grabbing. Uh, if, to sit here and say that the Middle East is not important is, is just – it just – once again, he hasn't done anything. He doesn't know the world. Arabia, Iran, Kuwait, that's important. Israel is not. We secured them back in 74. So exactly. That's dollar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Eastern Med is not important strategically. They say, well, you know, they buy our military equipment. They also get a sweetheart deal. They're the only country in the world that they don't have to spend all the military they, military aid that they receive from us on our military hardware. Mm. They get, I think it's 25% or more, they get to spend of our aid on their own defense industry. It's why they have very sophisticated defense industry. So that's not it. They say, oh, well, you know, they help us with intelligence. Really? Because they sell our military secrets to China. <laughs> they get caught doing it all the time. And... They steal intelligence from us. This just happened last week where Joe Biden was conducting these talks under the table to do another Iran deal. And then Yahoo leaked that this was happening. He's trying to sabotage the deal. So, you know, some ally on the intelligence front. So so here's here's the argument. Right. And, and I want to play the rest because you listen to Nick and you're like, there's a lot of truth in that. There's absolutely there's a truth lot of in, that. Truth in that. There's a lot of truth in that. And, and this is why when Nick Fuentes actually sounds lucid at times compared to this other rhetoric like Jake Shields and what the twins did, and, and you start hearing what Candace has said, he's, he's right. But that doesn't make him right. You can be right on the battles and lose the war because if you're going to sit here and say that the Iran nuclear deal is a good thing, well, now you're espousing for Joe Biden policy that somehow the Iran nuclear, nuclear deal is a good thing. In fact, how would you expect Netanyahu not to do that, to sabotage a deal with Iran when it puts him in a bad position? It puts them on a path of getting a nuclear weapon within 10 years. Now we at least have the ability to go ahead and not be held hostage. We can put sanctions on them. We can strike them. We can hit their oil reserves. We can do things to Iran. But you do the Iran nuclear deal. Now you're actually making a declaration of war if you go against them in any way of those facets. Why yeah. wouldn't Netanyahu leak that shit? Well, shouldn't he be opposed to Biden? Because he didn't do it under Trump. And you can sit here and pretend that he did, but he didn't. 
You got to remember what Obama and Biden did to Netanyahu. They isolated Israel. They funded fucking Iran. Some of the most major strikes that took place were under Obama's years and under Biden's now, where Iran is emboldened. Don't you remember when they were challenging our naval ships? Don't you remember when they were funding terrorism all over the fucking Middle East? Folks, th this is something that Obama and Biden have done together. Why would you expect Netanyahu not to be resistant to that? I will say this. Um, I would like to know what his stance on Israel was just prior to that attack, right? If he would oh, have yeah, been he, one of the guys that said, "Oh yeah, we love Israel," you know, this kind no, of no, he hated no, he I, didn't like the Jews then either. He's he's consistently disliked like Jews. Either. No, no, and that's one thing I got to give Nick Fuentes credit for. He is consistent in his in his in his intolerance for Jews and blacks. He believes well, that I, there should be no interracial marriages. He believes that all immigration should stop. Uh, he doesn't believe in the union between that, that blacks should have their own culture, that segregation is fine. He says things that are that are based and sound, you know, OK, I kind of get it. But he also changes his message. So this is something that they'll go, oh, you just watch this podcast. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I've said it multiple times. I watched like seven or eight of Nick's messages, watched him on different uh, shows at different platforms, and he changes the way he says things. He softens himself to be likable and affable, and he's really charming at times uh, in, with black crowds or when he's on with, with opposition-type hosts. But when he gets on his own channel, he's just fucking obnoxious. He's degrading. He he just says shit, goes, oh, I'm joking, and he goes, this is, this is just humor. It's not fucking humor. So uh, listen to the rest of this, and then, then we'll... We'll, we'll bounce off. The reason why we bend over backwards for Israel is because they control our system through bribery and espionage and corruption. You look at the Israel lobby in Washington, D.C., it's the richest, most wealthy, most effective lobby. And even that's there's a, a fact, too. That's not even that that's 100 percent a fact. Like the, the, the Israeli lobby is extremely powerful, deep pockets, lots of money. Look no further than Shell Nadelson. Shell Nadelson, number one donor to the Republican Party for the last 10, 15 years, $500 million to the Republican Party alone, one guy in the last 10 years. They buried him in Israel. When he died, they flew his body on a private jet to Israel, and the body was greeted on the tarmac by Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh. So he's an American billionaire, makes his money in uh, Macau, actually, casino magnet, and there's some connections there between China and Israel. But anyway, he makes his money here in America and uses all of his clout and money to finance the Republican Party, becoming the number one pro-Israel party ever. He leads the donor list of individual donors for Republicans every cycle in the last five or six cycles. Now his wife has taken over, and we talked earlier about DeSantis. Who did DeSantis go to meet in Israel a month before he announced? Miriam Adelson. His wife. He kissed the wall. He kissed the wall. Damn. And he met with other donors. So um, it's got nothing to do. They have nothing to offer us. They have nothing to give us. And actually, people don't know this, but the, you know this idea that the, the Arab Muslim world hates us. Hey, for thank you, Keith. Keith. Thank you so much, Keith. This is Hold the part on. I want you to listen to. Keith joined uh, Silver Club membership uh, for the Dumb Club. You haven't been over to the Dumb Club, folks. Go to thedumbclub.com. You can sign up. It's growing. We're building it right now, but we appreciate you guys helping us getting off the ground. A lot of great benefits, uh, if that's a little bit too much. But listen to this, uh, Leroy. This is the part. Mm -hmm. Or whatever is not real. The Muslim world didn't hate America until after Israel was created. The United States actually had good relations with the Arab Muslim world. It wasn't until after Eisenhower. Israel was created. Mm hmm and even before. Uh, okay. Uh, dude has never fucking studied World War II. The guy has never studied Gallipoli. He has never studied Turkey. Uh, he has never studied uh, anything um, uh, in regards to trying, world history, World War I. Yep. It, dude, the only reason why... <laughs> The United States and those countries got along, in your words, was because there was absolutely nothing that they could give us. And they were literally camels with fucking sabers. 
and we slaughtered any of them who opposed us. The Nazis actually built relationships with the Iranians. The Turks built relationship with Nazis. Go back to World War I, and, and you can look at Tunisia. You can look at the battles of North Africa, the Nazis versus American forces and allied forces. You can even go back in Christianity, and you can look at the Persians. You can look at the persecution. You can look at the Crusades that were versus the Moors and the Saxons. For, for you, to, you just don't know anything, kid. Yeah. You know how to hate you know how to hate Jews. And that's okay. That's exa- that's you know and that was Jews. exactly where I was headed with that. You do it well. Is, is it, you do it well. You you're really good at it, but you don't know shit. Go ahead. Yeah, if your only purpose in calling all of that out is just to to further drive a wedge between Americans and Israel, then that's on you, man. Um you know, I really don't I I can appreciate the fact that maybe he's trying to string together some some lucid thought and maybe some like maybe mild facts. I you know, I I can appreciate that he's trying to come at it come at that with an from an intellectual angle. Um but he's not right. He just and it's just ignorance. And you can't man. let and you can't let well, and that's exactly what I was going to say. You can't let your ignorance of world history pave, uh, throw you down a road of hate toward another uh, uh, country, especially Israel. Why can't we just say that that I'm Christian, I'm not a big fan of Jews, I don't like the fact that they don't recognize Jesus Christ, they don't believe in Jesus Christ as 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 God— and I, I, I think a lot of their practices are paganistic or something. Same way I feel about Catholics. Okay, great. You can say that. But if right. everything you say and the only thing you say is to marginalize Jews and, and, and talk about, you know, well, they were responsible for 9-11. Wait, wait a second. <sighs> Fuck me. You know, just I can't. I, I, I can't. Well, they sank, a, they sank a U.S. vessel off the coast of Israel. Yes, they fucking did. Yes, they did. Okay? All right? And do you want to know how many fucking passenger liners we killed full of Germans? Do, do you want to fucking know? Do you even care how many torpedoes we sent the fu- up the ass of a passenger liners? We probably shot down one of our own planes in Flight 93 during 9-11. Nobody will fucking talk about it. I will. By that time, we had plenty of warning. There were fucking Falcons and F-15s in the air. And it makes a lot of sense the way it went down. So uh, the United States has had to make decisions that aren't good, that aren't strong. We dropped two bombs on Japan, and we we, we targeted civilian, densely populated area, non-militar, non-militaristic uh, uh, areas. I, I can't sit here and pretend that Jews, Christians, Muslims, Orthodox, whatever, all haven't done terrible things. But if you're not going to point out the things that Israel has done right, then you're just as bad as people who say that America is a totalitarian government, they're an empire, and they've done no good in the world, because that is just one of the most baffling things I've ever heard. From from industry to textiles to leadership, to military, to humanitarian aid, to what Christians give back. I mean, for you to sit here and say that the United States has not influenced the world in a more positive way than negative is also very similar to the way that you say that Jews have done nothing good. They're all evil. And and to me, that's my problem, is that you are just one side of the argument. Go ahead, buddy. That's, that, that's just somebody who needs to read a little bit more. Um, you know, the fall of the Ottoman Empire or oh, um, any of the or right. the the you know the actual history of of Palestine and or of of Israel. You know, that's just somebody who is is basically trying to only use uh the facts that work in their favor in order to justify a perspective. Right. And and for you to sit here and say that 
you know, uh, the Middle East was absolutely peaceful fuzzy? before. Yeah, you are. You're, you just have a connection issue. You can reconnect if you want. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to load uh, up this other video. So why don't you reconnect and then I'm going to show you this because this is the last one for tonight. We got to go quick, but it's it's uh, okay. I'm going after my I'm going after my boy Benny. Benny, oh Benny Johnson, I'll be Benny, right yeah. back then. Give me yeah, yeah. Uh, thirty seconds. Okay. You know, I uh, I don't have a problem with people challenging other people. I don't have a problem with people who who stay focused with facts. That's fine. And Nick Fuentes can believe whatever he wants. And, you know, I think, like I said, I'll say it again, there's times where, where he makes sense to me. And he says some things, I'm like, wow, that's a really good point. And just because somebody says something that makes sense doesn't necessarily mean that what they're saying is accurate or true, so to speak. And and the best way that I can say is, you know, a silver a silver tongued viper is still a, is still a snake. And there are times when these guys say things that are just extremely off the freaking rails from Christianity. And you have to ask the 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 question you're pretending to be a Christian and espousing things that are that are so not Christian. What are you truly? But we got to shift. Um, this is a video, and I want to give proper credit where credit's due. This is Arian Wexler. <laughs> uh, Arian, maybe? But it looks like Arian. That was a little joke. Wexler. Uh, her tag is Arian Wexler and uh, on Twitter. So if you guys... I don't want to use her video without putting this on here. Um, okay. So I, I want to watch this. Sorry about that. Um, here, here, is the, uh, here is the video. She is accusing Benny of stealing. And I, we all know where Benny's set came from. Everybody knows where his set came from. I saw his set before my show. And I know that there are big influencers. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm going to say this with a straight face. I'm going to look at you square in the eye. I know Fox News has taken shit from my show. 100% guaranteed Fox has taken stuff and talking points from my show. It's a consistent thing now. It happens all the time. I know Benny took my set. Everyone knows he took my set. Everyone knows that he, nobody had a set like mine, and he built it identical. Everyone knows it. But I'm, I listen to big influencers, and they take shit that I've been saying for three years and reuse it, and I don't, I don't take that as a negative because copying somebody or trying to replicate what they've created is the biggest form of flattery, but you know what? You should at least give them credit. Because nobody was saying anything about the Constitution when it came to the election. Nobody was talking about the mail-in ballots. Nobody was talking about the USPS. Nobody was talking about the primaries with Wisconsin. I was. You take a look at even the ship video that I did. I was one of the first people to disprove all the fucking talking points that were just absolute crap. I've always done that. Look at Nikki Haley and, and DeSantis. Look at some of those predictions. I just saw on the news this morning, they were talking about Donald Trump's abortion stance. I did this last night, and now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, did you guys notice that Nikki Haley had these videos? And during her debate, she sounded just like Trump, and he's using the same vernacular. I know. I'm not stupid, because I do the same thing. I watch other people and learn things, but what I don't do is I don't steal from other people. The worst I do is take a meme or two, and I don't give people credit. If you don't tag your shit, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I'm, I don't care. But if you tag it, I'll leave it up. But what I usually do is I find your crappy meme that's distorted and looks like shit, and I improve it. I make it better. But I don't steal people's words, and I don't steal people's ideas, and I don't take things that they've created as a brand and change them. Benny never wore T-shirts before. Benny all is working out now. I'm, I can't wait for Benny to wear a fucking hat and grow a beard. So I'm just a little tired of people stealing shit. 
I'm frustrated. Here's the video. I never watch, watch a guy. He, I wouldn't be able to pick him out of a police lineup normally. I know. And, and you know what? I gave him credit before, but this video is important. And I'm going to give exposure to this low-level podcaster. Here it is. Look at the tag in the lower right. I got to refresh this. Ugh. Oh, you son of a bitch. My mouth is fast and loose tonight. I'm sorry. Have you heard of liberal math? It's destroying the country. So you've heard about girl math, but what about liberal math? Liberal math is if you get something that's paid for. With so this video is created by her. And what Benny does is he takes other people's ideas. Then mm -hmm. he sticks a 30 second clip or two minutes of him talking on the back end where nobody watches and it's clickbait. So he takes other people and then he sticks his logo on it. So here he is. He does this. He puts this little graphic. He sticks the Benny show. You can see it right here. The yep. Benny show logo. And this is this girl's video. Watch this. Liberal math is destroying the country. So you've heard about girl math, but what about liberal math? Liberal math is if you get something that's paid for with your taxes, but not with your credit card, then it is free. What, what does that even mean? Like, why don't you tell, I mean, what? If you just keep printing money, then everything is free. If there is a war we do not like, then it is very expensive. But if there is a war we do like, then it is free. If gas is the same and not higher than it was last week, then you've actually made money. If you go to college and study communist dance theory, then the government will just force someone else to pay off your loan, so it will be free. What the hell are you talking about? If you're a hardworking, taxpaying homeowner contributing to society, well, don't be silly. Obviously, then nothing is free. But if you're an undocumented, unvaccinated, unknown, unverified, un-American illegal immigrant, well, then everything is free. <laughs> In no it's, way did Benny. I, did, you know did, what? He, she is just trying to. I, she. That's obviously not a serious video. She's obviously poking fun at that. Um, but why the hell would Benny be involved with that? That's weird. Because he stole it. Because that's yeah. her video. She made it. She made that that video, and it was very popular. And he took it and went in the front of it and stuck his logo on it and gave her no fucking credit for the cuts in the creation, all the captions, audio, nothing. He just stole it from her. So her reply was the following. Math. And now you've heard about liberal math from a few places. <clears throat> now let's talk about... <laughs> Yeah, That's she's funny. gonna go off. She's gonna go off on him. Yeah, she's great. I want to have her on the show. So you've heard about girl math, and now you've heard about liberal math from a few places. <clears throat> now let's talk about Benny Johnson math. Benny Johnson math is if you take someone else's content and don't tag them, then it's actually your original content. Benny Johnson math is if you stick your watermark on someone else's face, you know, the way a dog pees on a tree, then that also is your original content. Benny Johnson math is if you use a hot girl for your thumbnail on YouTube and take her entire video with just a couple new memes spliced in, then well, it's really your original content. Benny Johnson math is if you stick a watermark on my dog on my my dog on my effing dog then i guess he's your dog now this is not a victimless crime where is PETA? In the arms of the angel. anyways benny johnson math is if you start a video acting as if the material that's about to follow was written by you when it was actually written recorded produced edited and uploaded by another creator then it's still your original content benny johnson math is when you make lots and lots and lots of money by lifting content and not tagging the creator and slapping your watermark on their face then that too is your original content if you steal a creator's content and no one sees the original then is it even a federal crime called copyright law as it turns out benny johnson math isn't actual math at all it's just stealing good on her so you dude i i'm good going to give this her. girl i'm giving her a fucking platform i'm inviting her on the show and honestly Fuck Benny Johnson. I'm so done with this prick. Every time I give him just an inch, he takes a mile. Good night, buddy. I love you. I'll see you in the morning, okay? We got garage duty tomorrow. Yeah, it was my All right. I know. Get some rest. I love you. So I'm just so sick of Benny Johnson. I don't care what good he does because every time he just steals from people. That's all he does. And he makes a shit ton of money. I mean, he makes a grip of money. He is a huge success, but it's not his. It, it, listen, Benny Johnson, a lot of people don't understand uh, he, he was fired by several news agencies for plagiarism. And 
you know, he has this just this rebound effect of constantly. If you look what he did, he was in bed with Vivek Ramaswamy. He was with DeSantis. He's with Trump. He he's just he's kind of just a shill. He's just yeah. always goes with the way of the current, and and I I uh, I'm sick of it. So I'm gonna reach out to her. You guys, if you want to go over there and reach out to her and say, hey, get your butt on the dumb show. She's only got ten thousand followers. I mean, she's she's right where I'm at with on Twitter. And uh, I just I felt real bad for her, and I was like, well, I'm going to give it a voice, and I, I'd love to have her on, um, yeah, so you guys can kind of really hear cool. what he says. Your thoughts there, Leroy? Oh, I I like her, and you know what? I, again, I Benny always came across as one of those like an Al Sharpton type, just on the other side, right? Somebody who was just more than willing to jump in bed with the with the latest cause, just so long as it was it was something that he could leverage to his advantage. Um, I never like that. That that's a scummy thing to do. So yeah. No, it's just you know what, and and it's not like he you know he's did some good things with the Christmas and you know he brings a lot of 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 positives to the conservative movement, but the guy just literally plays Fox News twenty four hours seven days a week and comments on it, and he just yeah. he does that. He takes great videos, and then at the end of it, he just says something for three minutes and rambles. Hey, it's your boy Benny, and you're just like. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, it's certainly not jealousy. It's more of just like, it's just like yeah. grimace, you know, cringe. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching the dumb show tonight, Leroy. We appreciate you being on. It was good to have you as always. Yeah, man. Love you, to, love you, buddy. Uh, anytime you want to come on, you are more than welcome. Uh, folks, if you have not uh, done this, please do this. The Veteran Crisis Hotline. Uh, 100% needs your support. If you know a veteran who is struggling, who is not doing well, you have the ability to help out by simply sharing this number, Veteran Crisis Hotline 988, then press 1. Veterans need your help. Leroy, I'm going to give you your minute. We are up against it. We're about to lose Spreely, so you got about 30 seconds, so give it to us. Oh, we had a lot. We covered a lot of territory today. Uh, most of it, most of the um, most impassioned speech that we covered on the show today was uh kind of addressing that death to america video um i would just say that i i would like everyone to kind of step back from their political position right review these documents right figure out what it means to be an individual and what it means to to have rights that nobody else can take away right um get into that mindset of you owning your own life and uh if you pursue that and if you can if you can follow through with those uh, uh with those thoughts to a to a logical conclusion ultimately you will find yourself on the right sorry gotta have. say goodbye to spreely hold it hold it one second gotta say goodbye to the spreely people we love you we appreciate you i gotta do that before we sign off and say thank you everyone else who's watching we also appreciate it. before you leave folks please hit the like button uh, we've had we had almost 212 on, but 97 likes. We need your help. When you leave, just hit the like button. It's kind of like picking up your popcorn and picking up your sodas before you leave the movie theater. And don't leave it for somebody else. Please don't leave your popcorn and your Jolly Ranchers in your seat. But hit a Be like kind button. and rewind, right? That's right. Be kind and rewind, folks. Wear a condom. It's not hard. Remember, if you have not had a chance, linktapgo.com slash the dumb show. Check us out on thedumbnews.com. The uh, dumb club also.com is working. We do daily articles on the news and please those that site is actually doing very, very well. Hit that like button, spam it on your way out and share. Also tag uh, this lady who was in the last end of the video. Cause I want to get her on uh, yeah. if you would uh, Aaron uh, Wexler tag her on Twitter and tell her to come on to the dumb show. Hey, Leroy, love you, buddy. Thanks for being on man. Go get some rest. You look okay. tired. Yeah. I'm I'm fading quick. <laughs> See ya. Love you guys. Yeah, Appreciate it. Peace. All right, everybody. Bye. Adjusting transmitter output. This is the Don't Unfriendly Show with your hosts, Matt, Leroy, Amy, Olivia, and Mike. Geopolitics, military analysis, and election coverage. Coming to you live on the Spreely.tv network and all major social media channels at The Dumb Show. Honest, direct, unfiltered. We can agree, we can disagree, just don't unfriend me.